Now, here's the order that things take place in a chemical reaction. You start off with reactants, right? The stuff that you're reacting. You got to make them collide with enough energy to make them react. Activation energy, you have to give it to the reactants, otherwise it won't work. You ever try to start a lawnmower with one of those little pull cords, right? You don't pull hard enough, nothing's going to happen. You got to otherwise nothing's going to happen. So you need to take the reactants and add enough energy to them to get them to start reacting. Then you form what's called an activated complex, the junk in the middle of the reaction, the intermediate you could say, which then breaks apart to form products. And each step of the way has its own certain amount of energy. If the reactants have more energy than the products, that means that when you start with more energy, let's say the reactants started with 100 kilojoules and the products ended with 30 kilojoules. Well, that means along the way, 70 kilojoules was lost. In fact, we could say the delta H equals negative 70 kilojoules. Because we started at 100, we ended at 30, which means we lost, that's why the negative sign is there, 70. If the heat of the products is bigger than the heat of the reactants, that means that the reaction gained energy. For example, if the reactants had 30 kilojoules to start with, and the products have 100 kilojoules to end with, that means that along the way the reactants gained 70 kilojoules. The delta H would be positive 70 kilojoules to show that 70 were gained. That would be an endothermic reaction. Okay, finally we're down to it. Potential energy diagrams for an exothermic reaction. Here's the reaction. X plus Y, these are your reactants, form K and 40 kilojoules are lost. Again, how do I know those kilojoules are lost? Because they're on the right side. Using this information, we can find out other information. For example, if we know that the reactants had 110 kilojoules and the reaction lost 40 kilojoules, that means the heat of the products is going to be what? Well, if you had $110 and you lost $40, you'd now have $70 left. 70 kilojoules. Why the decimal point? Okay, subtraction, ones place minus ones place, you have to have the ones place in your answer. So what was the change in heat? Minus 40 kilojoules. Right? That right there is the value of delta H. And you put the minus sign in front to show that the energy was lost. What about the heat of the activated complex? Well, if the reactants have 110 kilojoules and you have to add 45 kilojoules to get them to react, it's sort of like, well, I got 110 bucks. You can't buy it. You need another $45. That means that in order to make it work, you're going to need 110 plus 45 is 155 kilojoules. Okay, once again, the reactants need to get activation energy added to them to get the reaction to start. There are three levels of energy here. We're going to use a dashed line to represent them, which is why I'm drawing dashed lines. This will not be the scale, this is just a rough sketch. Okay, our reactants have 110 kilojoules in them. Our activated complex has 155 kilojoules, and our products have 70 kilojoules. That means that we're going to end up with 70. 70 will be at the bottom, that's our lowest value. That's the heat of our products. The reactants have 110 kilojoules. That's the heat of our reactants. And the activated complex, which is always going to be your highest value, is at 155. That's the heat of the activated complex. Now, let's draw a little curve that represents what happens to energy in this reaction. The reactants, that's these guys, have 110 kilojoules. So we're going to start at 110 kilojoules of potential energy. By the way, reaction coordinate basically means as the reaction goes from start to finish. It's basically like time, except you don't use any units because the reaction just happens too fast for the actual be able to time it. So, we start at 110 kilojoules and we're going to give it a 45 kilojoule boost. Boom! That's like striking the match. We're going to add 45 kilojoules. That's the activation energy. Now we have our activated complex, which is really unstable, and breaks up to form the products. That's it. That's the whole curve right there. And the distance between where you start and where you finish. You started with 110, you finished with 70. Draw a down arrow to show that you lost energy. That's the delta H, the change in heat. We started with 110. We might have got up to 155, 
Whatever we gain here, we lost here. The net loss is from here to here. That's why we draw the arrow there. What if we had a catalyst? Well, catalysts remove steps from the reaction to make the reaction go faster. So therefore, it's going to take less time to get to the activated complex and less energy. This would be the curve with a catalyst. We get up to a lower activation energy sooner and we finish the whole reaction quicker. See? Lower activation energy because a catalyst removes steps which means it takes less time and less activation energy and the reaction finishes sooner. That's a catalyst. What if you add an inhibitor? Well, that does the opposite. It adds steps, which means it's going to take more time and more energy, which means we're going to be slower in getting up to a higher activated complex. And the whole reaction will take longer to complete. Notice I'm still starting at heat of reactants. I'm still ending at heat of products. The only thing that's changed is how much activation energy you have to give it. The delta H hasn't changed. We still start at 110. We still end at 70. So our overall change in heat hasn't changed at all. Okay, now for an endothermic change. In endothermic reactions, potential energy is absorbed the reactants will gain that potential energy and form unstable products. If the reactants had 70 kilojoules and you had to add 80 kilojoules to make the products, 70 plus 80 is a total of 150 kilojoules for the products. Remember, law of conservation of energy says you can't create energy, you can't destroy it. So if you've got 70 plus 80 on this side, you have to have 150 on that side. 150 equals 150. Because the change in heat was positive 80 kilojoules. All right, if I had $70 in my wallet and I had $80 to that, I'm going to end up with $150 in my wallet when I'm done, and then I can go shopping. The heat of the activated complex, well, if the reactants have 70 kilojoules in them and you've got to add 120 to get the reaction started, 70 plus 120 is 190 kilojoules to get the reaction started. 190 is still the top number. That heat of activated complex will always be your highest value. But this time, since you're starting with less energy than you finish with, this time the heat of reactants is on the bottom. And the heat of products is above it. You start with heat of reactants and you give it activation energy. 70 plus 120 kilojoules, that's your activation energy. Notice how my arrow touches both lines and it's an up arrow because I'm going up in energy. Then the activated complex, which is unstable, decomposes to form the products. Our overall change in energy is from 70 to 150. So this time we draw an up arrow to represent delta H. Again, connecting the energy lines that we drew before. If you add a catalyst, it takes less time and less activation energy, but you still start and end at the same levels of energy. If you add an inhibitor, you're going to get up slower to a higher activation energy but you're still going to end at products. Just take a little bit more time to do it. And that's how to draw potential energy diagrams.